Hey guys, welcome back to Keith's Garage, where uh, we talk about fun old things with old cars. I happen to be a Mopar nut myself, but uh, I'm into the old car hobby. A lot of things we talk about here really relate to all old vintage cars. I happen to be into 1938 model Mopars. <laughs> well, that's what I own. I'm actually into a lot more than that, but I own a couple of 1938 Mopars. Um, just car stuff. Today we're going to talk about car stuff. Uh, as you know, I've been rebuilding my engine and and uh, I'm falling into my winter pattern here where I just basically uh, tinker away in the garage. And uh, I'm going to fire up my 1938 uh, Chrysler here today. That's what I'm sitting in right now. Uh, it's been sitting for about six weeks and hasn't fired up. So these old cars have a mechanical fuel pump. And when they sit for a long period of time like this, the fuel pressure drains out of the fuel pump system and falls back through the fuel lines. And when you first go to fire them up, they can take a while to crank over because what you're doing is you're working the mechanical fuel pump. It works off the camshaft. And you got to get that fuel pumping. You got to get that pump moving fuel, get it up to the carburetor, then it'll start. So don't be sitting there cranking the car over for a long period of time and just punching the gas pedal, punching the gas gas, you know, pumping it, pumping it, trying to get fuel in. That's not what's going to do it. Just crank the car over. I'll do that. I fully expect it to take a while here. And I'll show you what that sounds like. And um, once it, uh, it fires up, it's probably going to stall. It's rough. It's been cold. It sits for a while. Totally normal stuff. Um, choke isn't really going to do a whole lot here until I get fuel up to the car. So I'll crank it up. Make sure you got a good battery. I keep my battery on a battery tender and uh, keep it well charged. Let's see what happens. Taking a while. See what I mean? You could put an electric fuel pump in and have a little switch, a uh, toggle switch that you could hit and uh, prime it. That's a quicker way to do things. It's not a bad idea. I have not done that to this car, but I did put it in my 38 Plymouth, and I'll, I may do that one day with my Chrysler here. There it is. Okay, I guess I better open the garage. Is I did put a little bit of silicone where this cork gasket from here meets the bottom flat gasket here in all four corners. See a little bit of it there. Don't overdo it. Um, just kind of to give a little bit of assurance that that's not going to leak, hopefully. A few patches in the old oil pan, some brass uh, brazing there. Otherwise, it's pretty good. Another one over here. Not sure how that happens. I uh, sanded it pretty smooth as best I could. We'll paint her up soon. Well, pan is on. I know she's getting a little heavy to flip around again. There's a lot of weight on there now. That head is heavy.
guys, you've seen what I did to this engine. Some of you have been following me since the beginning. When I uh, first started taking measurements to figure out what I had here, which turned out to be a stock for engine. Um, you've seen all the things I've had to do to rebuild this engine. And what I have, I don't know, I, I didn't, I haven't told you what I've, what I've spent yet. Uh, I know what I've spent in Canadian dollars approximately. There's about a 20% premium call it for Canadian dollar versus American dollar. So let's say, I know I'm into this about 5,200 Canadian for complete machining, all parts, speedy sleeve, generator rebuilt. Um, that's about, call it 42, 4,300 American. And I did all the labor myself. And I, I think I, I did it to the best of my abilities. Um, I didn't cheap out on anything other than I, I, I reused my con rods and they were tested and they were straight. Everything is new. Even the camshaft, tappets, lifters, valves, springs, guides, water pump, timing chain. I reused the front pulley and the, you know, the bolt on stuff. New oil pump, new everything, all machine. So now if you watch this video through, although I'm still not done, you're starting to see the final product here. Um, you know, one of the tricks people might want to do when they're selling a used engine is paint it and say, oh, it was rebuilt, you know, it was running when I took it out or whatever. Don't fall for the paint. I mean, it's going to look good when it's done, of course. But as you can tell, now there's a lot that goes into an engine rebuild other than paint, obviously. And that's obvious to some people, but if you're new and you're buying a used engine, be very weary what you're getting. The best thing to do, in my opinion, would be a compression test, oil pressure test. If, if you're not going to take stuff apart, at least if you can build those things, you're going to learn a lot about conditioning your engine. If you're buying a used one or you're considering rebuilding your old engine, you know what? Those are the early things you can do to get an idea. Maybe where you're even going to start. Let this dry and bolt on some more parts. You know, maybe uh, you're asking yourself, does a guy need to spend this this kind of money to rebuild this engine? This is kind of ridiculous, right? Like five grand, over five grand Canadian to rebuild this engine. Um, well, a couple things. One, I've said it all along. I'm learning here and I'm having fun and I wanted to do it the best of my ability. So I'm going to do this engine. I'm going to try and do it right. And I just did it with spare hobby money. I'm not breaking the bank or the family's not going hungry because I'm rebuilding this engine. So that's one reason I spent the money to do it right. And you may ask yourself, well, does a guy need to do all this machining? Like, can, can a guy just like put in piston rings and, uh, you know, get the compression back out and maybe do a valve grind good enough? Well, yeah, you could probably get the engine like um, running again and, and, and be running fairly smooth maybe if you did that, if you get the piston rings to reseal. Um, but machining, when you're machining things, the crankshaft journals, the, the part that the bearing rides on, they don't always wear smooth and flat. They may wear slightly tapered on an angle because of thrust loads. So when you put in new bearings, you might have high and tight spots and loose spots. So you may not get a good bearing uh, contact area. Um, that causes hot spots, stress spots, uh, lower oil pressure. So turning a crank and everything, getting everything straight and true is important because this engine is designed to... Uh, work under all kinds of temperatures and loads and, and to toxic conditions with all the internal combustion gases. I mean, do it, do it, do it straight, do it right. Get it right. That's my opinion. Um, you know, you could just hone the ring, hone the cylinders, maybe put a new piston rings and that'll, that'll work for a while. It just depends how worn it is and what you want out of the engine. If you're just going to uh, quickly uh, maybe patch it, do a, an in-frame partial rebuild and drive the car for a few more years and you're going back in later, you know, you're probably going to have to go back in later. Or maybe you're just selling the car. And that's that's fine. That's a cheap way to do it. But the machining for a good engine is important. It's not cheap, but I think it's worth it. If you're keeping the car.
Well, guys, that's about all the progress I have to show you for this episode. Um, I still got to get to the manifolds. Intake and exhaust manifolds are down on the floor there. Where are they? Over here. Um, I don't really want to put that rusty manifold back on. I want to clean it up. I think uh, I'll probably get it hot tanked. The intake and the exhaust. I don't want to sandblast them. I don't want to use glass bead. Especially on the intake manifold. I didn't want it anywhere near the intake manifold. So I don't want to do the exhaust manifold either. You probably could, but I'm a little paranoid. I've seen what glass beads can do to the internals of an engine. And all it takes is one little bead stuck somewhere to fall in there and start bouncing around. Disaster. Total disaster. So I'll get those manifolds done, get them painted up, make them look good, and get those on. And I think I'm just about ready to drop this engine back in the car. That's going to be exciting. You know, I want to talk about a comment somebody made in one of my uh, posts. And uh, they said, you know, it's rebuilding an engine at home in your garage. And they kind of alluded to the fact that it's, it's all fun and games until you fire it up. And it, it probably should have went to a professional machine shop. It should have went to someone that has been rebuilding these engines for decades. These engines aren't challenging. They're not high compression engines. These things have pretty loose tolerances and uh, they'll just, they just run. And to me, there's always that risk, of course, right? What if I fire this thing up and I throw a rod and I told you I spent about five grand on it? You know what? The experience, uh, the education, it's been fantastic. I, I, I know I've spent five grand on a holiday before and gotten less enjoyment out of the holiday than I did rebuilding this engine. Seriously, I really enjoyed it. I'm not done and I don't think it's gonna cave. It's gonna run, it feels good. All my checks and balances are, are seem to be adding up. Check, recheck everything, torque everything, clearances, tolerances, machining. You know what? It is what it is. If you don't risk, there's no reward. You don't want to rebuild an engine because you're scared that it might not function. Well, is that really living your life? Is that really... Are you doing what you want to do? Just do it. Don't worry about it. Just do it. Have fun. Enjoy it. You can't put a price on the experience. It's been awesome. All right, guys. That's today's episode on Keys Garage. Thanks for joining me. Next week, next video, I really should be bolting on manifolds. Maybe getting this thing on a crane. And uh, take the next steps. Let's get this done. I can't wait. Fire it up. See you on the next one, guys.